Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, welcome there, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the Pet Parenting Reset, and I am your host, Jessica L. Fisher. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining me. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer, and the Pet Parenting Reset is all about different methods for pet parenting success, is what we're all about. And today we are gonna be talking about expecting too much from our dogs. And I have touched on this a couple of times on um, YouTube in the past, but I was in a room last night on Clubhouse. It was uh, just for dog trainers. And it was really interesting. I actually had not been in a room like this before. I, they said it was their first one. Uh, so I was in a room with other really amazing, wonderful dog trainers. And what they were doing was uh, two of them had cases. One of them was actually a new puppy that one of, one of the trainers had just gotten. And another was a case, uh, you know, a dog that they were hired to train and they were struggling with. And this happens um, not always in, in any fault of the trainer, but that every dog is different. Every family is different. Every environment is different. So when we go in, we have a set of tools, right? Every dog trainer has a tool bag, basically. And over time, that tool bag uh, grows and increases in value. But we have a tool bag and we ha we, that we come in with, that we know to do. And there are various different ways that we get pushback, right, from, um, clients. I've had, I've had people who just don't want to tell me the truth or they're not telling themselves the truth about their behaviors. Those are some of the more frustrating ones for me personally, because if you're not being honest with yourself, you can't be honest with me. And if you're not being honest with me, then how are we going to address the situation appropriately? But there was a particular case that really got my attention and everyone was pretty much on the same page that this puppy was like way too much was being expected of this puppy they were just putting entirely too much pressure the puppy had just shut down and that's unfortunate and it wasn't according to the trainer it wasn't that these people were intentionally doing anything and they certainly weren't intentional um, about harming the dog in any way shape or form they absolutely loved the dog and were very open to positive that's in fact what they were looking for with positive methods but the dog just had entirely too much pressure put on them and that the amount of pressure varies right from dog to dog because they're all individuals and it's important to remember they are sentient beings. Now, the amount of pressure that we impose on our dogs just in normal every day is already up there, let me tell you. It's not normal um, or natural for a dog to be confined in a home, first of all. Now, we have domesticated dogs over time that it's just really, in general, not safe for them to be out roaming the streets all hours of the day and night there's there are too many, many like environmental things that could be happening out there that are going to harm our dogs they are much safer in our home environment as long as the home environment is safe let me say that but it's not it's not natural for them to be on our routine. It's not natural for them to walk slowly by our side. It's not natural for them to be fed kibble 
is not natural <laughs> for, I mean, there are so many things just in the course of a day that we are asking our dogs to do that is not necessarily natural for them to do if they were still a wild animal. But if we then take on top of that pressures that we put on them to perform or to obey. Um, now there are some instances that we really need our dog to quote unquote obey. Um, and I say that because a recall is in my opinion, one of the most essential skills that we need to train our dogs to do because if they, and we need to consist, we need to be consistent and work on this over time. And even if we think our dog has an amazing recall, we need to reinforce it over time so that our dog is always going to be able to come to us when called. And if you are watching the video, I am so sorry about, like I am just struggling with my hair this today, yeah. So I apologize about that. But reinforcing the recall over time, again, it is incredibly, incredibly important. So the pressures that we're putting on our dog can be astronomical. And in this particular instance, the trainer felt that the girl, so it was a 16 or 17 year old girl in the family, the, the parents had gotten her this puppy and uh, knowing that while they were still taking care financially of the puppy, it was going to be her dog. Um, so she was going to learn all of the training and everything for it. So while the parents partook some in the training, it was primary, primarily the girl. I don't remember if she was 16 or 17. And the girl really, really wanted like that cuddle bug dog. It was a smaller dog. Um, I think she said it might have been like a Yorkie mix. So a smaller dog, she really wanted that like cuddle bug who was just always gonna be there and on her lap or in her lap and snuggling with her at night. And that just was not this dog. So those kinds of pressures <laughs> uh, that we can put on our dogs, in my opinion, and in many other trainers' opinions, while it is absolutely necessary and there are plenty of reasons that it is a good idea to train with a dog there and, and you know positive outcomes for the dog as well because we're building bonds and, and, and everything that goes in to training with our dog there is a point where we are simply asking too much and again, there, there's so many different levels in which we can be asking too much of our dog. So for instance, let's go to something small and let's just talk about an individual training session. I tend to limit training sessions to 10, maybe 15 minutes max, because that's about the point with any dog that if it's a new skill that we're trying to teach, then there's always the possibility of frustration. But also, um, how long can we really expect them to be paying attention to us and nothing else? And then at what point does our positive attitude shift, right? So 10 to 15 minutes, and, and then on top of that, at what point do we stop learning? Because there is a point where we are engaged in a learning mindset, right? And our dogs as well. There is a point where they are engaged and in a learning mindset, but that one, even, even though we can get in a learning mindset, we're not gonna stay there forever. So 10 to 15 minutes is about max, what I like to do for any one training session. That doesn't mean that you can't train two or maybe even three times in a day, but it does mean that we need to put some boundaries on what we are expecting of our dogs. But also, you know what? Let's put some boundaries on what we're expecting of ourselves too, because that is just as important. Now, if you haven't listened to previous <laughs> podcasts, episodes, I definitely recommend you check those out because now we're kind of getting into that seven miracle steps territory, right? When we're talking about patience and positivity and um, consistency and all of those wonderful things we've talked about in, in past podcast episodes. If you haven't listened to those, I highly recommend you check those out. They are, you know, I have a book out, uh, the seven miracle steps to train your dog. And so we broke that into, I kind of did a Cliff's Notes 
which I broke into two podcast episodes. Even if you've already read the book or listened to the audiobook, I highly recommend you go back and listen to those podcasts because it is never a bad idea to get a refresher on those seven miracle steps. Even if you have them on your refrigerator, you know, plastered on your refrigerator to see every day, let me tell you, after a little while, um, you're probably, even though it's right in front of you, not seeing it anymore. <laughs> That's just how our brains work. Um, so check those out. But let's start talking bigger about the pressures we're putting on our dog and expecting too much of them, right? Let's talk a little bit bigger. So let's talk, like I said, you know, we can talk a little bit on a bigger scale, but let's stick within the realm of training. There are people out there now, fortunately, I haven't come across too many of them individually in my practice, but there are people out there who want to train their dogs into becoming robots, right? They want them to sit in the corner and not to be seen or heard until you're ready. And then once you're ready at that point, you want them to do or say or speak or whatever it is, exactly what you want, when you want, no questions asked. Guess what? Our dogs are not robots. That is never going to happen. And if that is your goal, if that's what you are trying to achieve with your dog, then I highly recommend that you don't own a dog. That is not what you want. Get yourself some robot toys or pull up your video game or whatever it is that you can completely control. That is not a dog. That is not what we want in our dogs, that is no life for a dog. Yeah, let's just, no. no I'm, I'm gonna have to stop it right there because if I get into too much more detail about that, I'm going to upset myself and I'm not in the mood to do that. <laughs> Another way that we are asking too much of our dogs, that we are probably you know, imposing our mindset on our dogs, which is incredibly unfortunate, is that we're not providing them with the amount of enrichment that they need in their lives. And now that there's that's a double-edged sword because there are some people out there that may be providing entirely too much enrichment and it's overwhelming their dogs. So one of the things that's really, really interesting that trainers who do not use positive methods um, do is they overwhelm dogs and when a dog becomes overwhelmed, one reaction that can happen is that your dog shuts down. And some trainers, specifically ones who use aversive techniques, um, fear, a lot of fear-based trainers, uh, which is incredibly unfortunate. Honestly, I wish they would go away. <laughs> but um, they will push that dog into a place of fear, overwhelming them so much that they completely shut down. And then when that dog shuts down, they say, look, your dog is not performing that behavior you didn't like anymore. See, this works. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, you have just scared the crap out of the dog until they literally could no longer choose if fight or flight was going to be uh, the best response in the moment and they have just completely shut down. You've completely overwhelmed them. There are lots of different ways in which we are just simply asking too much of our dogs. But let's let's go back a little bit to the enrichment that I, I started to bring up and then got sidetracked with. <laughs> enrichment is wonderful and I love providing enrichment with my dog uh, for my dog, but the enrichment that I like to provide my dog over and above any other enrichment is interactive with me for a couple of reasons. One is because that's what my dog prefers and most dogs will. Now there may be some dogs that are more independent and choose not to engage as much with humans um, as may be the case with the dog I was just telling you about um, on the trainer chat that I was listening to. Um, and talking in last night. But in general, dogs are very family oriented and they want to be with you and they want to spend time with you and they want to engage with you. So the enrichment that I provide my dog primarily is interactive, whether that is playing with her toys, whether that is um, using her food to train. Now there are some 
some people out there, and I don't think this is a high percentage of people by any means, but sometimes we find something good and we go overboard with it, right? And enrichment can also be one of those things where we are we see that it's a wonderful thing for our dogs and then we just way overdo it. Um, again, to the point that our dog is overwhelmed and they just don't even, they might, they might shut down, um, they might lash out, they might just, you know, be exhausted at the end of the day. Now, one, one instance that I can think of um, as an example is that if you decide you want to teach your dog agility, which is wonderful, by the way, for some dogs, but not for all dogs, and you start out training on an agility course and your dog is just terrified, and you try to force them into the tunnel because you're like, you're gonna love this, I know it, and this is enrichment, and this is gonna be good for you, so let's break through this fear. No, not necessarily. Is this more for you or is this more for your dog? And in that instance, I would say, oftentimes, it's more for you. So let's pay more attention to what our dog actually needs and less uh, attention to what we want our dog to want. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. Um, basically, in a nutshell, oftentimes we are asking entirely too much of our dog and while I primarily wanted to focus on the training aspect of that and just, you know, the everyday life of that, um, one more thing about everyday life is, and I, I've, I have done a video on this on YouTube, and, you know, there are, there are, the comments are like 50-50. Some people are like, man, I get it. And other people are like, you're out of your mind. Um, but the absolute longest amount of time that, in my opinion and many other professionals' opinions, a dog should ever be left alone, like literally max, and this is a healthy adult dog, fully potty trained, four hours. Um, so yet another way we're imposing our wants and needs onto our dog is by leaving them home alone for too long. And look, I get it, we have to work, right? <laughs> to pay the bills, um, but there are things we can do to help mitigate this l duration of time for our dog being left alone. There are friends and family, neighbors, doggy daycare, um, dog walkers that you can have come in. I mean, there, there are so many options out there to help your dog deal with and cope with the amount of time they're left alone. Yeah, I wasn't sure that I was gonna include that in today's podcast, but. It, you know, I thought about it at the beginning and then now I'm like, I really need to include that because while it may be controversial, it is the absolute truth and what I, I'm like called in my heart to include in today's episode. So let's stop asking too much of our dogs. Let's, you know, let's work, let's meet them where they are. Let's set them up for success um, what, regardless of what we're talking about, but let's go back to training. Let's set them up for success. We don't want to ask too much of them too quickly. The three Ds of dog training, um, I know I've talked about multiple times. If you have taken my online course or are currently in my online course, you uh, know the three Ds of dog training. We're talking about duration, distance, and distraction. Right? We don't want to throw all of these on at once. We don't want to um, increase any one of these too much at any one time. Set your dog up for success. Meet them where they are and build on that. Um, yeah, so let's, let's stop asking too much of our dogs. Guys, stop, please. <laughs> They're dogs. They're not humans. They are sentient beings. They have wants and needs and feelings. So yes, we can coexist happily, peacefully, healthy living as well. Like let's, let's include everything in here. Let's, we can definitely coexist and honor them as they are because they're dogs, not humans. And we want to treat them 
that way and allow them to be dogs. Let them sniff out on a walk, let them dig. If you don't want them digging in your flower garden, I get it, build them a dig box. Set them up for success, don't ask too much of them, let them be dogs. Let me know, <laughs> let me know, reach out to me. Join me on Patreon, join the family. I can't wait to welcome you to the family. We can have a discussion about this over there. Um, some lessons maybe you have learned over the years about letting your dog be a dog and not, not asking too much of them. I would love to hear from you and see you over there in, uh, on the Patreon, on Patreon, join the family. Make sure to give this podcast a follow. <laughs> I was, I, I'm so used to doing videos. Um, if, if you would prefer to see a video of this, you can definitely check it out on Rumble or YouTube. I do post the video of my podcast. They go up a week after, a week later. Um, so you get the podcast first, on all the major podcast networks. Hopefully by the time this episode goes live, Apple will have indexed it. Apple takes a long time and I apologize. It has been on Spotify for a while. Uh, it has been on Google. It's all there it, and it will be on Apple as soon as they index it. Um, so give the podcast a follow. Make sure to click the bell if there is a bell so that you can get notified when a new podcast goes live. Join the family, like I was saying, over on Patreon. I would love to welcome you into the family over there. Uh, you get exclusive content over there as well. It, it's mostly about pet parenting, but sometimes we talk about other things too because we are humans and we are multifaceted. So there's lots to talk about always. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Oh, I please, if you enjoy this, um, make sure to give the podcast a five-star review. The whole goal of everything I do um, is to improve the lives of pets and their owners. And the only way I can do that is by reaching more of them. And the best way to do that is by you sharing and giving uh, good reviews so that the platforms suggest this podcast or this video, depending on where you're getting it, to other people. So yeah, uh, oh, there was one more thing. What was it? Oh my goodness. Oh yes, if you don't want, or if you don't have or choose not to join any of the podcast networks, if you just prefer to go to my website to listen to the podcast, you can also do that. JessicaLFisher.com. Fisher does not have a C. So um, you can search all socials for the Pet Parenting Reset and find me. I, I, I'm just so excited about the podcast and about all of the ideas I have for upcoming episodes. I can't wait to share them with you. I hope you join me every single week. So do make sure you give this show a follow. And yeah, you wonderful pet parents out there are why I do this. Um, you and your pets, of course. Give your dogs and cats a kiss, a hug from me. And yeah, be safe and I'll talk to you next week. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks for watching.